because it's hard losing a loved one. I didn't to breast cancer, but other people have. I guess my emotions go to where my loss has been. So the eyes just show it. They leak. And how long have you two been married? I better let you answer that question. 35 years in June. I love it. And 35 years of bliss, 35 years of love. Absolutely. It's my best friend. Me too. <laughs> where, do you, where do you live and where you were born? I was born in Austin and uh, grew up mostly in the Houston area. Okay. And you've been all over the place. Yeah, so born in Oklahoma, but ended up in Texas and super happy to be in Texas. Yeah. And this is Allie? Allie. This is Allie. We found her in an alley and thus she's named Allie. So. 14 years ago. And do you have children? Yes, we have two sons. Um, both of them married. The oldest, Bobby, has two children, a three and five year old. And we're expecting with the second son, Royce, in July. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, art to you is what? Uh, a creative outlet, um, peaceful, something to do in my spare time here. Because <laughs> you're retired now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When did you really pick it up? Well, it started when Bob used to travel for his job and he was gone for Usually it was maybe two weeks, but this time it was three weeks, and I really wanted him to be excited about coming home as I was excited that he was coming home. So I picked up a canvas and some paints, and at that time we owned a winery, and so I did a cluster of grapes because they're round. I decided I'm going to paint with my boobs, and I did. Cluster of grapes, took a picture of it, sent it to him, and he texted me back and he goes, oh, that's nice. And I texted him back and said, I painted it with my boobs. And his response was, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> Which was the response I wanted. You're, hearing, you're getting that text from her and your reaction is? Well, at first it was like, hey, that's a really nice painting, you know, and had no idea how she did it, right? And when she texted me back, I'm like, oh, okay, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, I love that it started as something as simple as that, simple and beautiful as that. To, yeah, to just know a little crazy. <laughs> Say again? A little crazy. I do crazy things sometimes. <laughs> uh, you like crazy though, it sounds like. Well, you embrace crazy. I like having fun. So I like to tell my friends, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. So I'm the social director for the McKinney area newcomers and our neighborhood. <laughs> so when I try to tell them we're doing this, then some people go, oh, okay. No, if it ain't fun, I ain't doing it. So it's gotta be fun. Take us back, because what spawned this really? It was, your, it was something that happened to your mom. <clears throat> well, the painting I did for him was in, I think, December of 2012. In October of 2013, my mother had to have a mastectomy, and I had a, what they call a partial mastectomy at that time. So I went down. How did you find out about your mom? Was it a phone call? Was it a oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Probably, I don't know if my sister called me or my mom did, because my sister was living down there at the time as well. And how did that news hit you? Um, well, I got to share my news with them, too, that I had to have... A, a lump removed. So I decided at that time that I would go and use my mom's doctor and have mine taken care of at the same time as her so I could take care of her because it was going to be, you know, two or three week recovery for her with the, the pumper thing that, you know, drains everything. Uh, a mastectomy is not an easy procedure to go oh, through. Especially my mother was 82 at the time. So she's 92 now. Um, 
so it, had they found they had found a cyst or something? Oh, what did they they found a lump mm -hmm. with her? Mm -hmm. and that was eleven years ago. That, yes, already yes. And then and then you at the exact same time. Yes, around, around the same time. Mm -hmm. Mine was just a little lump, and mine was benign, but hers was cancer. That's a tough word, isn't it? It is, you know, but we deal and we move on. I'm, I'm my mother's daughter. <laughs> She's not crazy. Though. But anytime we hear about anything happening to our parents, it, it, it hurts us a little harder. Yes, because this came uh, three years after my dad passed. So uh, the previous year, I think, um, I think it was the previous year and it, she had to have um, gamma ray radiation for uh, some spots in her head, which were non-cancerous, but they wanted to try to shrink them. So that, that all came out good. Bob, when you're hearing about, we never want to see our, our loved ones go through anything painful, right? But it is, the nat it is a natural life that we live through, right? For sure. How did it hit you when you hear about even a benign tumor for your wife? Yeah, of course. I'm very worried, right? And um, just wishing that the, the best possible outcome. And, you know, her finding an outlet for, for that emotion and to um, find a way to bring a positive light to it through her creativity and, and with this art that she does was um, really a blessing. Yeah. Do you remember how you, how you first noticed that you had this love? They found it in a, a mammogram. Um, take, us, take us through what you're feeling in that moment. I guess it was a little scary, but my mother had had lumps in the past too that were benign. And so they said, you know, this one was the size of a grain of sand, basically. And went in, they put a marker in my breast and they were easy, you know, able to find it at the the hospital in Houston. So, I don't know, we're just kinda, we, we handle it, we deal with it and just move on. Ever since then, you have sort of this epiphany, right? That you could do something, uh, explain the, the, I mean, I understand the diagnosis, but then following that, something, there's some kind of thought, there has to be a thought process to how you go from that to, hey, I think we can do something more. Well, it did. Um, after I came home from, it was probably while I was actually in Houston, but when I came home, I decided, well, I, I'll, I'll start painting more, just see what I can come up with. I didn't have any idea what I was gonna do with the paintings. I just wanted to see what I could do. And so I just bought more paints, more canvas, and, and started painting. And I had this one painting that our financial planner saw and he goes i want to buy that for my was it his niece or cousin or I think, something yeah his niece and i was like really and he goes yeah how much is it and i gave him a price and he just i'll reach a check I was like, whoa cool and i thought well if i can do that then i can probably do more so when i when somebody writes me a check i in turn turn it over you know send it to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. I have a fundraising page there. And that way I don't have to deal with any taxes, anything, everybody just donates straight there. So I, that's what I did. And I think it was 2017, probably 2017 that Eden Hill Winery up here in Salina, um, they have sipping shops and so I would go there and do my thing. I mean, I wouldn't show, no. I, I would take my paintings and be at the sipping shops and people would buy them there. That was kind of my first realization that I could keep doing this. So I went from there to making note cards and on the back of each note card is a short story, you know, my story. And people will buy those for either their relatives or friends that 
have had cancer, breast cancer, any type, and send that to them as a nice little gift. Look what's going on, you know. And so um, I just keep painting. You know, I come up with an idea and I just try it. Bob, as, as she's going through this process of thinking about how you doing this, what, do you, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm just very proud. I mean, that she's able to um, use her talents and creativity, right, to support such a great cause. And it, it's something that affects so many people, right? I mean, everybody knows somebody that's had cancer or has had cancer themselves, right? And so it's, it's such a big impact when she's doing one of these shows or, or an auction or just getting her paintings out there. How do, you, how do you feel when you see her paintings and you realize her story? Yeah, of course, very, very proud, right? Um, uh, that she's got, she's found something that she's so passionate about helping uh, try to find a solution for, right? It's just her part, her way of making a difference. Um, the sad reality of, of cancer is some people don't make it. Mm -hmm. um, has that idea ever come, has that thought even come to you that you'd be without her? Yeah, of course. Um, it, it's a place I don't like to go mentally, right? And was so grateful that um, in her case, that it wasn't, uh, it was a benign issue. Um, but of course it, it comes to mind when something like that happens that it could be more serious than that. Do you often think about that, Darlene, that this could be a very different story? No, I don't go there. As I, everybody knows who, that knows me, if I go there, then I start crying. So I don't go there. Uh, I know a lot of families have cried through a lot of difficult times, right? Right. Is that what you're offering them? Is that what you're offering them? Some peace? Um, offering maybe a little, <laughs> In, a, in addition to, you know, it benefiting the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, um, it offers a lot of laughter sometimes when I start telling people this is boob art, which is classic, class, classily, classily spelled B-O-U-X-B-A-R-T. Um, and they look at it and I go, I painted it with my boobs. And then they look at it and they'll go, really? And typically the men will look at my boobs and I'll go, yes. <laughs> Some of them just start laughing and then they realize, oh, well that explains it, you know, why, why everything's round, why they're flowers, why, why they're leaves or whatever, you know, um, why it's more impressionistic art because it is, impressionistic art <laughs> as you will see but um yeah um i think that just bringing it out to different scenarios different settings like the sip and shops and whatever where uh, mckinney wine merchant has a wall for me there um people can see the story and go wow we can get this painting and it, all the money goes straight to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. I mean, they're impressed with that, but it's my way of saying, let's do this together. I can't walk the 60 miles or whatever it is. My joints don't let me do that. I, I can paint, I can put it out there for others to enjoy. Why boobs? Why use your boobs? I don't know. It was just a crazy idea I had <laughs> at the time because he was out of town. And it was like, well, how do I make him excited to come home? But the tie-in is, <clears throat> is yeah. certainly great, right? I mean, breast cancer research, use your yeah. boobs, right? So. And I think I remember you telling me uh, there are some women who will never have use, functional use of their, their boobs. Why not use it, right? I think I... Think I... Yeah, so... After, after I had my procedure done, I just, and my mother had her mastectomy, I decided while I got them, I'm gonna use them for good. So I just, that's when I just started painting more.
And as you can see through my house, <laughs> I paint quite a bit. Yeah, your house is like, a, like an exhibit hall by itself. It's it? my gallery. The upstairs especially is, is my gallery. So yeah, I keep them up on the walls, preferably off of the floor. <laughs> so my, my workspace is there when I need it. When you see a map, when you see a map of these files, <clears throat> Oh yeah, so if I see one that I really like, I'm like, hey, let's keep this one, right? And I think in general, people want to help, you know? And so um, when they see her paintings and they like them and they, they realize, hey, I can have, you know, this beautiful piece of art in my house and at the same time be doing something to help uh, breast cancer research. But when you, when you see a painting, what do you see? Um, yeah, so I just see the, the beauty of nature, right? Because a lot of times Darlene is, um, painting things from our travels. We like to travel and so um, if she, you know, will be walking on a, a walking tour or something and, and she'll stop and take pictures of this with a, a vision in mind of, of a painting that she wants to create. And so when I see those paintings, I, you know, have a remembrance of the trip that we took. And cancer is a trip for a lot of people, isn't it? Oh. Uh, yeah. Not a fun one. Take us through some of the places that have inspired your work. Uh, the Texas countryside trips up to St. Joe, where there's a winery we like to go to, Blue Ostrich. Um, Maui, Kauai. Um, Pretty much anywhere that has uh, these yeah. bright, vibrant Oh, flowers. yeah, the Dallas Arboretum. Some of my best work came from pictures that I took there. I mean, I don't have any of them, but um, yeah, those went really quick. Why do you think women who have also had metastatic, have had mastectomies, um, are buying your work? As to support those that are going through it or haven't gone through it yet. Because they know. What do they know? They know that it's a tough time and that we really want a cure for it. We want a cure for breast cancer. and so supporting those research entities to, to get it done, to help them help others. I mean, that's the whole idea behind this is to help other people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think back to, to I'm 10 years ago when my mom was going through it, right? Mm -hmm. It is such a, almost, you know, you know, with chemo and all this, it's such a dehumanizing process, right? Mm -hmm. Like, slowly you're watching someone die, right? right. It's, it is the, one of the hardest things you'll ever have to deal with, even from the outside, and I'm not, you know, actually going through it. But um, do you feel like you're offering something else for the women who are seeing it? And they're having it placed in their dining room, you know, in their dining room, or they're putting it, in their living room like the two people were about to go see. What do you think that when they see it, what do you want them to feel? That other people are there to help them in one way or another, even if it's uh, <clears throat> moral support or if it's fundraising for the cause. Um, just to know there's other people that care and that they can reach out to. What's the hardest part about any of this? I don't know, I haven't thought about that before. <laughs> um, for me, I guess as the artist, uh, coming up with new ideas of things to paint, and my sister wants me to paint a buffalo, and I'm like, I can't paint a buffalo. <laughs> but I may try. <laughs> yeah, um, you've wit Bob, you've witnessed these paintings, right? Yeah, although I've not he's seen the never, process. He's never seen the process before. You guys are going to be the first to see the process okay. live. <laughs> you, just, you just see the process. Of the, you just see the, the final process. Right. So, I mean, as you'll see when she starts, I, you know, she, she does the background in a more traditional way. Um, but, yeah, when she hits her studio and starts working, I only see what comes out of the studio. 
remind me of the reaction people have when you first when you first tell them yeah so it's really interesting when i go to one of her fundraisers and i i watch her talk to people um they'll have one of two or three reactions right sometimes she'll tell a guy and the guy will blush and kind of scurry away um, other people are just like in shock and fascinated um, but always you know interested right because it's a very unusual thing that she's doing yeah and, and some of them look down at her boobs don't they I mean, ah yeah so she tells a story about one of our friends who's a singer songwriter in the area and the first time she told him you know his eyes went directly down and then he looked at me and said sorry bob <laughs> right um but yeah she they're her paintbrushes after all so yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go with me everywhere that they do. What's, what's the reason that you have, you don't watch the process? Is there a reason behind that? Um, you know, I think that's kind of, to me, I mean, she, I don't think she would like kick me out or anything, but that's kind of her private sanctuary, right? To do her creative work and everything. So I try not to intrude on that and I'm happy to just see the, the end result. Well, he's more than welcome to come watch. It's, but it started again when he, cause he used to travel. And so it happened that Every time he would go out of town, I would go buy some canvas and paint. It would give me something to do while he's gone. So and then I can show him when he comes back. Look what I did. <laughs> Titillating, aren't they? Then <laughs> that way he stays abreast of all the painting oh my that I do. <laughs> <it>. Sorry. <laughs> What's the part that takes you? You were saying you, you cry on, on command. What's the part that gets you there? At least as it relates to the work you do. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just kind of an empath that feels other people's feelings and their pain and just talking about it. That's why I just try not to go there. Because it hurts? Maybe my heart. Because it's hard losing a loved one. I didn't to breast cancer, but other people have. I guess my emotions go to where my loss has been. So the eyes just show it, they leak. When you're painting, are you thinking about them? Um, it, it's hard to get into the creative mode sometimes. So when I'm there, it's how do I do this without, first of all, making a mess? <laughs> As you will see, my workspace is a small area by choice. Um, And I guess more of what colors will people like this year? Where, how can I make the most money for the breast cancer research? Um, how big can I go or how small can I go? So I got the itty bitties <laughs> and then I got the largest that I've ever done, uh, 36 by 48, very difficult to maneuver. And sometimes I come up with new techniques too. Just thinking, how am I gonna get that done? Well, let's try this, so. Yeah, how many have you done probably? Oh my goodness. Including the itty bitties or yeah. a couple hundred probably. Over, over 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I do little balls too, that I call boo balls. <laughs> I've done a pumpkin before, it was a boopkin. <laughs> you know, I see things and I think, oh, I can boob that. <laughs> or other people will say, hey Darlene, why don't you go paint this? So I think one of the good things that she does too, because she's got such a diverse portfolio, right? Somebody who doesn't have the money to buy the 36 by 48 <clears throat> can still participate, right? By buying a small one or a Christmas tree ornament. It's like everybody wants to help and not everybody has the means to help in the same way. So it's good that she does like 
something that everybody can participate in. Do you ever wonder, Bob, people are probably wondering by themselves, how does she do it? Like, how? How does that even work? I'm sure they do. I, I do too sometimes, actually. It's like, how did you get that from those brushes, right? But uh, it's all a secret and a mystery to me, so. Just different techniques that I've come up with. And I do classes. Nobody's taking me up on them, but <laughs> it's like you get your own private bathroom to work in. 